Chapter 3.4, Primordial Economics. It is not the most intellectual of the species that survives. It is not the strongest. The species that survives is the one best able to adapt and adjust to the changing environment in which it finds itself. Leon C. Meganson, Reference 50. Chapter 3.4.1, Benefit to Cost Ratio of Attack. There is estimated to be more bacteria on Earth today than there are stars in the universe. Suffice to say, Earth's nutri nutrient-rich volume has become significantly more congested than it was 4 billion years ago. As our oceans began to fill to the brim with bacteria, organisms began to face a new challenge, resource scarcity. It was in response to resource scarcity that life appears to have discovered one of its most primordial economic equations the benefit-to-cost ratio of attack, BCR, subletter A, reference 5152. Every organism could be described as a nutrient-rich bounty of precious resources. Inside every organism are the building blocks necessary to create other organisms. For this reason, most organisms represent an attractive target of opportunity for other organisms to do what we have established that life does demonstrably well, capture with force. Consequently, a weak, docile, or ineffectual nutrient-abundant organism is essentially a floating gift basket of vital resources for neighboring life forms to devour. This is because of the primordial, primordial economic dynamic shown in Figure 11. Figure 11 shows the equation of benefit to cost ratio of attack equals benefit of attack over cost of attack. And as you can see by the rest of it, as the resultant number will tell you to attack or not to attack based on the cost versus the benefit. Very simply explained. Oh, I can just do that. Sorry. Every organism can be attacked, therefore every organism has a BCRA. An organism's BCRA is a simple fraction determined by two variables, the benefit of attacking it, BA, and the cost of attacking it, CA. BA is a function of how resource abundant an organism is. Organisms with lots of precious resources have high BA. Organisms with less precious resources have a lower BA. On the flip side of the equation, CA is a function of how capable and willing an organism, an organism is at imposing severe physical costs on attackers. Organisms capable of and willing to impose severe physical costs on neighboring organisms have a high CA. Organisms that are not capable of or willing to impose severe physical costs on neighboring organisms have a low CA. Higher BCRA organisms are more vulnerable to attack than lower BCRA organisms because they offer a higher return on investment for hungry neighbors to devour. Organism, organisms therefore have an existential imperative to lower their BCRA as much as they can afford to do so by increasing their capacity and inclination to impose severe physical costs on neighboring organisms. An organism can't just devour, devote all their time and energy towards increasing their resource abundance and expect to prosper for long, because doing so would cause their BCRA to climb and jeopardize their chances of long-term survival. To survive, organisms must manage both sides of their BCRA equation to prevent their BCRA from climbing to hazardous levels. Organisms must either shrink their numerator or grow their denominator. They must either decrease their resource abundance to decrease their BA or grow their CA by increasing their capacity and inclination to impose physical costs on attackers. Decreasing resource abundance is not an ideal solution for organisms seeking to grow. So increasing CA, cost of attack again, i.e. increasing the denominator, is a preferable option. If organisms choose to grow the denominator, they must grow their cost of attack at an equal or higher rate than the rate at which their benefit of attack increases, or else their benefit to cost ratio of attack will climb. 
Chapter 3.4.2, lower benefit to cost ratio of attack means higher prosperity margin. A simple way to visualize the primordial economic dynamics of survival is shown in figure 12. To survive, an organism must keep their BCRA level lower than a hazardous BCRA level that will motivate neighboring life to attack them. The space in between the organism's BCRA level and the hazardous BCRA level can be called the prosperity margin. This margin indicates how much an organism can afford to increase its BCRA before it risks being attacked. Primordial economic dynamics seem simple and straightforward, but there's a catch. There's not really a way for organisms to know how large their prosperity region is because they don't know exactly what level of BCRA would qualify as being hazardous. How hazardous a BCRA level is depends almost entirely on factors outside of the organism's sight and control. This is because it depends on external circumstances within the environment. If the neighboring organisms, potential attackers, choose to grow their cost of attack to lower their benefit cost of attack ratio, BCRA, then the hazardous BCRA for that environment drops and the organisms which don't lower their own BCRA lose prosperity margin. Thus, the same organism with the same BCRA could have two completely different pro pro prosperity margins based exclusively on the conditions of the environment, which the organism can neither see nor control. This phenomenon is illustrated in figure 12. Organisms operating in empty neighborhoods have intrinsically higher prosperity margin than organisms operating in environments filled with neighbor and life. With that surplus of margin, they can devote more time and energy towards boosting their resource abundance, thus increasing BA and, and increasing their BCRA without having to focus much attention on growing CA. They simply don't have to worry about their BCRA as much because there's nothing around to attack them, hence animals like manatees. Environments tend to change, however, sometimes quickly. They become congested. They fill up with a lot of other organisms. When environments become more congested, they become more contested. Organisms Organisms increasingly oppose one another's attempts to access the same limited resources. As environments become more contested, they become more competitive. Organisms seek to gain an advantage over each other. While all of this is happening, environments remain intrinsically hostile. Entropy is a constant looming threat. And if entropy doesn't attempt to kill an organism, a hungry neighbor will undoubtedly try to devour it. Add these factors together and we get the type of environment all organisms live in today. Congested, contested, competitive, and hostile. CCCH environments. Organisms can try to move to different environments that naturally afford higher prosperity margin. But, whatever, but wherever life goes, other life inevitably follows. Making the new environment CCCH as well. Consequently, finding a non-CCCH environment is not really an option. Survival therefore becomes a task in learning how to adapt to the local environment by learning how to throttle down BCA, BCRA and buy oneself as much prosperity margin as possible. Different organisms have different success at this task. Figure 13 illustrates how organisms which succeed at lowering their BCRA level enjoy more prosperity margin. A hazardous state arises when local environments become increasingly CCCH faster than organisms can adapt to them. When these changes occur, previously acceptable BCRA levels become unacceptably hazardous. It becomes more of an existential imperative to devote time, attention, and energy towards growing CA to lower BCRA. If an organism doesn't find a way to grow their CA fast enough, they compromise their chances of survival by making themselves the neighborhood target of opportunity for surrounding life to devour. Most organisms learn this lesson the hard way, but there are intelligent, but there, 
but some are intelligent enough to adapt and develop new power projecting tactics, techniques, and technologies to continuously lower their BCRA.